the best way to get rid of Sarisha is find somebody that doesn't know what it is and sell him the property. <laughs> That's pretty extreme, not the solution. Right. Sarisia <laughs> lespidiza might be the worst weed on our native grasslands, whether it's a reestablished one we've planted native grassland or a remnant that's never been plowed. Sericea lespidiza is a problem. Introduced lespidiza from China. So I have with me today, Steve. Steve has 40 years of experience controlling Sericea lespidiza. I think there might be a thing or two to learn from him about it. So Steve, tell me a little bit about Sericea lespidiza and how you control it. Well, it was introduced as a forage eons ago and has a wildlife cover. And it doesn't do a very good job of doing either except it uh, is very persistent. It's a perennial and uh, it's, it uh, invades uh, all kinds of country, road, roadsides, forests, uh, prairies, grasslands, and uh, nothing really wants to eat it. Insects don't really use it. Wildlife don't eat the seed very well or browse it. So it's one we, if we just leave it go pretty soon, that's, it takes over everything and it suppresses everything that would grow with it like native grass or about anything else. So. Just ignoring it, saying, oh, I don't want to mess with nature isn't going to solve the problem. You have to physically go after this. Mowing is not going to control it. Uh, burning won't control it. It's, it likes to be burned and come up from seed and, and the rootstock from burning. So it has to try to, two solutions to it. One's a, just a use of it, and that's grazing it with goats. We'll keep it down low, but never kill it. Herbicides are the only thing that actually wipes it out. We we can control. Somebody says, "Do we have a good herbicide?" Well, we have some. It's not how how well we can kill that plant. It's how long can we keep it, kill it, and the roots, the seeds that are in the ground that are going to last for years that keep coming back. So it's not just a one done and one and done deal. It's a it's a long term management problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that being said, herbicides, you find the best way to go. Um, what do you know about which herbicides work, which don't? What are the secrets? Today we're using, beginning as early as the 1st of June, when we first start seeing it, we're using a tricoplayer for oxapir combination called either Pasture Guard or a generic one, Clear Graze. Works very well on it. And uh, then about July, you can switch if you would want to. I continue to use pasture, the, that combination, uh, pasture guard or clear graze, clear up until the uh, end of September. Uh, others will switch to a triclopyr compound, either Garlon 4 or, or Remedy uh, for July and August and sometime into September. And the other one, you have to use Escort uh, in the fall. Uh, I have not used Escort simply because it, if you don't clean out your sprayer at the end of every day, it will gum up the sprayer and it give you issues. So that's the only reason I don't use the Escort or the uh, uh, related compound. Uh, just from my sprayer standpoint, I continue to use Clear Graze or Triclopyr in the combination. One thing I will caution you on because we, I belong to the Sarisha Working Group for years, multi-state group. And uh, don't use any compound or don't ever add any 2,4-D to the mix. Sometimes we think it 2,4-D is the solution to everything. We used it 50s and 60s on crops and everything. We found with Sericea lespidiza, any 2,4-D will cause the plant to shed its leaves before it in, imbibes or absorbs the herbicide into the root system. So... Uh, so Crossbow really or, or something, a couple of others that have some 2,4-D in it are going to eliminate the effectiveness of what that chemical, like tricopyr that was in that herbicide. So yeah, uh, so they've that, got the one that kills it in there, the 2,4-D is making the other one ineffective yep. in essence. It makes it ineffective because the leaves shed before it absorbs it. This is a smart plant. As a friend of mine said with Dow AgroScience, the smartest dang plant I've ever tried to control. If it senses that you're trying to kill it, it goes into a semi-dormancy and shuts down and comes back next year. Yeah. So uh, he said, you gotta fool it. Any other secrets for managing Sericea? Just keeping in control. I like to spot spray. I don't like to broadcast spray because I lose my other plants, my pitcher sage, other uh, max milling. Get it when you first find it, find those spots and treat 
by a backpack sprayer or a, a, an ATV with a tank on it with a boom wand that you can spot spray, kill as little other plants as possible or spray a watcher over spray and uh, get it soon and keep going back because there'll be other plants that show up where may have been in the herbicide shadow that didn't get herbicide on them or that came up later from seed or maybe were bit off by a grazer and and uh, then it'll come up later so you have to go keep going back to that same area and it's it's a frustration because the seed comes back for 20 years yeah yeah i've noticed as i've been on the out roguing the cerise out killing it i think i, I do it enough i think i'm good steve there you and go i think i can get them all yep. and then i walk back a month later and i'm like oh how did i miss that about as good as i thought i was how did i miss that <laughs> right so I think it is a really good point. And sometimes the plants are just small or one reason or another, you're not seeing them that day. Yeah. And so um, go, and another thing that we have found when we're roaming out Ceresia is that it matters which way the sun's shining. Oh. So if we will walk this way across the field and then we get done and we start walking this way across the field, you can start to see them. And we'll use some of that blue dye sometimes so yep. we can see what we've treated. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, a lot of things matter. Um, but this is one, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to go away. It seems to get worse if left untreated. And it, depending on probably on where you are and the adaptabil adaptability of this weed. But um, control is, uh, digging is another option, but you need to get the root system out. You Got a pretty, pretty vast anywhere. root system. But we have went to digging some on our place too. Well, any closing thoughts on controlling Cerise Lepidisa? It's like any, any introduced plants that's a pest, you gotta stay on top of it. Yeah. And it takes years to get ahead of it. Should I plant it for my goats, Steve? Well, I think the goats have a lot of things they can eat before they have to plant, eat Cerise Lepidisa. They will seek it and they'll probably do okay on it, but hey, there's a lot of things goats eat. Yeah. It's a bad weed for some people. I, I think that's... That's what you do. If you plant it, you're making decisions for other people too. But oh, for a long time down the road. For a long it time affects the road. land. Yeah. I'm Elizabeth with Hamilton Native Outpost. We raise native grass and wildflower seed. And this is Steve Klubine, who was a grassland biologist for a number of years. And now he's retired, but manages this grassland and still works to teach people how to manage native grasslands, including the invasive weeds. We at Hamilton Native Outpost make these videos to share the unique knowledge that we have gained from over 40 years of working with native plants as we raise and sell native grass and wildflower seeds. If you found this video helpful, we need your help to get the message out. Please subscribe, share, like, and comment. It helps others to find us. Thank you.